Oh, man. It is so frustrating to look at sketches by design students and young design professionals that really haven't put in the time. Really studying and understanding perspective could be one point, two point, three point, doesn't doesn't matter. You got to put in the time, right? And particularly when you get into things like cylindrical objects, or maybe it's a round power button, right? Or knobs, you know, in perspective. If you don't understand the principles behind kind of the major and the minor axis of an ellipse, then you're just going to be making glaring mistakes that jump right off at the page, right? And it says, hey, look at me. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So if that's you, if you have this minor axis affliction, Coach K is here to help you work through that. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm gonna to try to break this down for everybody real quick. And basically every ellipse has a major and minor axis. And it should be pretty straightforward that the minor axis is the shorter uh, axis and the major axis is the longer one. And they are always perpendicular to each other, always at 90 degrees, even in, in perspective, it remains at 90 degrees. And, and you'll see an example here in just a moment. Now, the, the, the tricky part is, is not just drawing the, the ellipse and, and the axes on it, it's actually putting it into perspective. All right, so nothing beats the old cube in, in terms of warming up and, and drawing and in, in practicing your, your drawing in perspective. And so what I'm throwing down here are some lines. Uh, this is two point perspective. So all the lines on the right converge to one vanishing point and all the ones on the left to a corresponding one, all situated on the horizon line. Here is an example of really the proper way to be drawing. And that is when you have a bunch of ellipses to throw down on uh, in your design, really throw the, the minor axis down on the page and use it and align your arm to it and you'll see it's much easier to throw an accurate ellipse when you align your your arm your drawing arm with that axis and so now i'm going to put the the ellipses into perspective right so you see vp1 and vp2 those represent uh, vanishing point one vanishing point two so if i'm going to put a hole or a power button or anything on the left side the minor axis is going to be in perspective going to the same vanishing point. And you can see all the lines on the right are going off to the right and they're converging to a point that's not on this particular page right now, but you can maybe imagine that. Same is true on the left side now. And my minor axis will be going to vanishing point one, right? So turn the page, that's what I'm doing. Even though this drawing is digital, I'm still turning my page because it's still a natural movement of my, of my arm, draw, even drawing on a digital tablet. So now just a couple quick tips uh, and tricks for, for using uh, axes in, in your sketching. Uh, they're really crucial because you use them for alignment. I'm just going to be sketching out two little spheres here. Uh, this goes back to the geoform exercise. The video's already been posted, but I thought I'd kind of revisit it a little bit. And that video was uh, was analog, and this is digital, of course, like I said. But you can see that I'm using that line, that axis that I've thrown down on each one, so that they vary, right? Because the, the straight on view has a vertical axis. The, the view on the left 
the sphere on the left has one that's kind of oblique, right? So, but you still want to use that for alignment. So you, you, you would have like in a orthographic side view, you would actually have kind of a cut through that ellipse. So really that's it. You can see that all my ellipses are lining up on this axis, including using it for a power button detail on the right side of the left sphere. Bonus footage. Thank you.